Hey everyone, Hammer Dan here with Hammer Performance. So today we're going to show you how to install XL slash early model Buell cams uh, into a Sportster motor. Um, we'll show you all the different checks that need to be done. Um, we'll show you uh, some of the clearancing uh, issues that you may run into um, as well as we'll show you how to chamfer the back of the number two, number three cam lobes. I know we're going to have to do that on, on this motor uh, when we put the cams in. So we'll go ahead and show you all those things and point out some of the different uh, things that you really need to take a look at when installing cams. Um, so let's get started here. Um, I think the first check that you really want to do is, first of all, I can tell you this. On the earlier model cases, the 91 to 03 Sportster cases, anything over like an Andrews N4 cam, you're going to have to clearance the cam box. Uh, you're going to have to clearance the lifter bosses in the cam box. Okay, for those that don't know, the lifter bosses, if you come here and take a look, are going to be the bosses that stick down over each brass or uh, bronze bushing there for the cams. Um, they hold the lifters, lifters ride up and down in them, and so we're going to want to go ahead and clearance. Now on this motor, we've already clearanced in the, in, the, in the vertical mill, we've already clearanced our cam box or our lifter bosses here on this, this Sportster. But for those of you out there that have an earlier model, 91 to 03, almost guaranteed you're going to have to clearance at least one lifter boss, more than likely all four, depending on what cam that you're putting in the bike. Now, all of the Hammer Performance cams that we have come with smaller base circles, or 600s or 50,000 smaller, 560s, 570s, 50,000 smaller base circle. Okay, um, that helps us out there on the clearancing. But with that being said, I can guarantee you that even with our 50 small, 50,000 smaller base circle, you're going to have to clearance the lifter bosses um, to make those cams work. What I've seen so far is usually anything Andrews N4 and below will fit in there. Um, and it will clearance, but anything above that, you're probably going to have to do some cam box clearancing. So, with that being said, the first thing that you're going to want to check that that's really, really important here that a lot of people forget about, because we always hear about clearancing the lifter bosses and whatnot, and that's checking the bushings in there, the cam bushings, as to the lifters that are in the bike. So let me show you here. We'll go ahead and stick a lifter in, in here and we'll put in the anti-rotation pin real quick here screw that all the way in. So the anti-rotation pin is going to keep our lifter from spinning. Now if we take a look down here and we let this lifter drop if you look in here, let me grab the flashlight here real quick so we can see if we take a look in here you can see down there that the lifter is going to sit on that bushing there. Okay, see how it falls right down on that bushing. Anytime we put a smaller base circle in there, we have to make sure that that, that lifter is gonna ride on the cam lobe and not get hung up on this bushing. So the best way to do this is to go ahead and put a lifter in, and then we'll slide a cam in. It doesn't really matter what cam it is, uh, preferably one of the smaller ones, even though it's in the number two position here. If we push that lifter up, and we slide that cam in there. If we can take a look with the flashlight in there and look all the way in the back underneath. Okay, I don't know if you can see it here under there. Um, I don't know, maybe you can get on, can you see it on the back there? Yeah. Okay, if you can see the, the lifter riding on riding on the cam as it spins up and comes down. Our concern is on the back side of our base circle there on the lowest point is whether or not that lifter actually gets held up on the bushing, on the brass bushing, and is not riding on the cam lobe. That's very, very important because if it is and it's getting hung up, we need to go in there and put a beveled chamfer on the upper back part of that bushing there so that the lifter doesn't get hung up. A good way to tell is if you can get in with a flashlight and take a look, you'll be able to see that there's clearance between the lifter and the bushing there. And then ultimately what we want to do is just pull the cam out while pressing down on the lifter and see if it falls. You hear that? It fell. We'll push it back up in there. Okay. Now let's see if we can hear it. 
Hear that? So we got it falling off the back of that lifter. You can hear it fall. So we got clearance there. And again, you can visually see with the flashlight in there, okay, that it's actually not resting on that bushing in the back. That's very, very important. We can tear up the motor if we do not check that and that lifter actually rests on that bushing and not ride on the cam lobe because then the cam lobe, cam lobe spins around camera lobe spins around it gets caught up on that lifter uh, it hits the lifter up and then drops it back down in there really hard onto the bushing and causes all kind of carnage and, and, and heck and damage there so first check is that that way you'll know if we have to go in and clearance the cam box that that is one of those things that we will have to clearance as well is the upper portion of the bushing where we chamfer it at an angle okay on this upper part here above the lifter boss where we chamfer at an angle right in there to make sure that we get a chamfer on that back side right there so that the lifter doesn't be, get hung up on on that bushing there so we're good to go with this bike um, we have probably about 20 thou of clearance or so before the the arm of this and this is the arm that we're concerned with here right here this flat spot on the lifter there that that rests on the bushing on the outside portion there so there's not much we can do here. I would not recommend chamfering the, the lifter at all. Go ahead and chamfer the bushing at an angle on the backside if you have an issue with that. So that's the first check to make sure that you don't have to clearance that. If you do, then that'll be a part of the rest of the cam box clearancing that you have to go ahead with. So on this one, like I said before, um, this being a, a, a 2000 model, um, um, we don't have to chamfer uh, again, we don't have to chamfer um, that, that bushing there, so we're good to go. Uh, but if you do, then you'll make note of that as you go into clearance. So with that being said, if you take your cams and we put them into each, each uh, hole, and granted, you don't have to use all the cams. You can use one to check them and mark them. What I suggest doing is putting the, the cam in if you have to clearance, and then... Um, and then um, if, we, if we go in here, and as you can see, our cam lobe spins freely in there. We got more than enough clearance in there. But if for whatever reason you, we have to clearance, you can roll the, the lifter or the uh, uh, lobe up to the um, lifter boss there. And once it touch, touches, then I suggest coming in with a Sharpie like this and putting a mark across the top of the of the uh, lifter boss there so you know right above the uh, right above the cam lobe and do that on the front and back of all four of them so that they're marked then you can pull the cam out now we have a reference on each front and back on how much or how high i would suggest grinding up to the top of the mark then we know we have enough clearance there um, at that point um, you know we're going to want to take the 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 oil the oil pump drive gear off and the the pinion gear and the nut take that completely off you're going to want to drop your oil pump again the two allen bolts disconnect your hose slide your oil pump out of there so we don't have the oil pump you'll look something just like this um, you know kind of wipe things out really really good and then i suggest getting some like uh, gorilla glue duct tape and we're going to want to duct tape over our brass bushings there uh, uh, bronze bushings there. You're going to want to duct tape around your pinion in the race itself. Okay, make sure you just get it taped up really, really good here. We don't want any particles in there. No particles in the bushings themselves. And then if we look here, there's two spots under here that are open all the way into the cases there. Okay, if we see that, that, that spot right there. Okay, and then there's another one over here on this side right here that's open those two open spots you're going to want to take some blue paper towels or whatnot and stuff pieces up in there okay so that we don't get anything back in there as well again tape it up really really good um, and then you can use a die grinder or a dremel something of that nature and take your time no rush front and back of each lifter boss up to the top of the uh, sharpie mark that you have on there do all four of them once you're done with that, then I suggest taking a shop vac and vacuuming out all the big chips and everything that's in there to get the majority of them out of there. And then what I would suggest is taking some brake clean, a can of brake clean and spraying in there to spray all the minor particles or really minute particles out. A lot of it will just run out of your cam box or it'll run down your oil pump hole, okay, to clean it all out. And then once you get that done, you can take everything off and voila, you're done, okay? So 
once you have your uh, lifter bosses all clearance, then the next step is going to be on some of the bigger lift cams, like our 600s, um, even our 560s, 570s, you gotta check. But this is another check on the number two and the number three cam lobe. So we'll pull those out here. And if you look, the cams are all marked on the back of the cam lobe. So if we take a look at this one, it says HP 600-4, that's our number four cam. This one here on the back says, HP 600-2, so all of our cams are going to be labeled dash 1, dash 2, dash 3, dash 4. Okay, and here is our number 3 that we're concerned with. Make sure we have the right one here. Yep, the dash 3 and the dash 2. Now I'll show you with the dash 3 here. If we take a look and we put this cam, cam lobe in here. Okay, if we come around to this side over here. And we take a look, you can see the cam lobe hits the lifter boss right there. Okay, and I'm pushed, I push the cam lobe all the way in, and as we spin it, we're hitting that lifter boss right there. Okay, we need to chamfer the back side of this cam lobe so that we don't hit the lifter boss. And I can guarantee you we're going to need to do that on the number two cam as well on the back of the cam lobes. So I'm going to show you how we do it. Um, you know, there's numerous different ways of doing it. Um, I highly recommend using like a stone wheel on a bench grinder. Very simple to do. You may have to go back and forth a couple times to, to, to chamfer it to make sure you got enough. Um, you don't want to do excessive amounts. As we can see, we only got to do just a little bit on the top portion there to, to, to chamfer it. So let's go do that real quick. Show you how to do that over here. Okay. So if you come around over here on this side, turn on our bench grinder here. And what I'm gonna do is chamfer just this top portion of this cam lobe right here. Okay, so we're going to hold it at an angle here, hold it tight with your hands. We're going to come in, and we're just going to rotate this back and forth on here. As you can see, we start to chamfer it there like that. Okay, we'll do a little bit more here. Look at that and see if that's good. Put that one down. Grab our number two here. We'll do the same thing. Hold it at an angle. Okay. A little bit more. like that to we'll see if that's good. So while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and clean it with some brake clean. That one there. Spray this one. Over here real quick and blow these off. All right, so let's go back. Let's see if these fit here. Kind of old school, got to drag the cord around. We're not into the new age yet with the wireless. Someday we'll get there. <laughs> okay, so we'll grab this. So we're gonna stick the number three in here. Come around to this side over here. Okay, so let's take a look here with the flashlight and let's see, look at that, it doesn't touch. Okay, so if we kind of take a look, that's all we need is just enough clearance there so it's not going to touch. Okay, so we're going to call that good on that one. Slide that one out. And so I suggest doing all these tests like this with the pinion gear 
and the oil pump drive gear and nut off of there. Um, like I say, if you've got a clearance anyways, you're dropping the oil pump, it's good to do these checks because then you can do the number two as well and you don't have to lock it up to the uh, pinion gear and then use the crank to do it. But if so, and you haven't taken any of those things off or you already went and put the, the uh, bronze oil pump drive gear on there, then you can leave them on there. Um, you just got to use the crank or the rear wheel to rock it back and forth to make sure you have enough clearance. But we're going to go ahead and stick the number two in the number two slot there. Okay, and uh, go ahead and take a look here and see where we're at. And there we have it. We clearance that one as well. As you can see, we're not hitting, so we're good. And I'm pushed all the way against the bushing there to make sure that no matter how hard I push, it's not going to hit. So we are clearanced. Good enough. All right. So cams are clearanced. I got those two washed. I'm going to go ahead and quickly wash our number one and our number four cam here real quick. So we'll go ahead and brake clean that. Again, got to carry the cable around. We'll just run over here real quick and do that. Again, you can buy cans of brake clean and spray them, but we want to get the uh, all the sticky crap off of here. There's that one. Okay, we'll go ahead and just blow these dry. Okay, now we'll come back over here. So all of the hammer cams again, a hammer cams again, as far as base circles go, all of ours are gonna have smaller base circles to fit them in. Um, all the cams pretty much are a bolt-in except for the 600s. You may have to do a little bit of clearance in there on the 600s on the later model sports. There's 04 and later, any of the fuel-injected bikes or whatnot. Um, our 560s and 570s are bolt-in for those bikes. For whatever reason, the registration on those, those cases are a little bit different, and we, it allows us more clearance under there in the lifter bosses. 91 to 03 cases of registrations kind of all over the board there and so I've had some guys tell me they've only had to clearance one cam some guys told me they have to do all three or all four or two out of it so just double check yours again the three checks that you're going to want to be concerned with here one is the is the lifter making sure it doesn't get held up on the bushing race back here uh, or the cam race here um, and not ride on the cam lobe, especially with smaller base circles. Um, I know the Screaming Eagle 575, Screaming Eagle 551 cams all have smaller, 50,000 smaller base circles. Um, so those are ones particular, make sure you double check. Uh, but we wanna make sure we don't hook up here with our lifter. That's our one check. We're gonna wanna check our uh, lobe swing on our cams to make sure our lobes do not hit the lifter bosses on the front and back. If they do, we wanna clearance those so we have enough clearance there. Um, you know, we're talking 10 thou, 20 thou clearance there on the, on the lobe swing underneath so that we don't hit, okay? Um, and then lastly, the number two and the number three cam, making sure we do not hit our pinion race here. We highly recommend that you chamfer the back of the cam lobe rather than the pinion race, okay? I get the question of, hey, can I just grind on my pinion race here and clearance that instead? Listen, guys, here's the deal. You're talking about replacing a new set of cams if you screw it up rather than if you screw up the pinion race, A, you take a chance of getting any minor small metal particles into your roller bearings in your cases there and destroying your bearings, okay? And B, if you grind that race and it gets grind too far um, and you have to do, you have to replace it, guess what? Motor all has to come apart, crank has to come out and you have to press that race out, line lap a new race in. It's a lot more expensive to fix the pinion race in the case than it is to just get a new set of cams. So your choice on what you wanna do, we highly recommend just taking and chamfering the back of the number two and the number three cam lobes so that we have enough clearance there to clearance the pinion race, okay? So 
Once we got our clearances done and everything's good, we want to clean out our cam box with brake clean, make sure everything's good. It'll drain all out, it'll evaporate, and everything's good. Um, and then at this point, um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put our bronze oil pump gear on. Okay, that's our next step here uh, to driving forward. So again, bronze oil pump drive gear. You can check out our other YouTube uh, link, or our YouTube video on our YouTube channel there and on our website under our tech tip section, we have our videos there. Um, so you can check out the article on installing the bronze oil pump gear, but we'll show you again here for quick reference. So we're gonna just slide it on. There is a keyway here, as you can see. Keyway is gonna go right over the key there push it all the way in. Our pinion gear is going to have a keyway notch. Okay, we're going to go ahead and slide that on and line it up with the keyway just like that. Very simple to do. We got our nut. Okay, so when we put the nut on, lots of red Loctite. Okay, step number one. So we'll go ahead and put Loctite in here. Okay, so some of these nuts, if you take a look, have like a little washer flat in them there. You see that? The other side, not really so. Okay, it's not as pronounced, okay? So with that being said, lots of red Loctite in here. Move it around. The washer side that's a little more pronounced is the side that we want to go against our pinion gear. Okay, that side there that's a little more pronounced towards our pinion gear. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on. Okay. okay, now we're gonna use our super duper grind lock tool. Awesome tool that Aaron made. I think it's the best in the industry. It really hugs these teeth nice so we don't uh, break off any teeth or anything. Again, real quickly, reference on putting this on. You cannot put it on from the side. Lots of people try. It will not go on from the side. I get told the gears don't line up or they don't mesh. The way to put it on is to slide it through the teeth this way. So we're going to go ahead and slide it on the teeth just like that. Voila, it fits. You can rotate this up or down. We'll rotate it down to line up our bolt holes there for our Allens. I'm gonna go ahead and screw these in. Super simple to do. Snug it. Be careful. Whatever you do, be careful on steel into aluminum. Man, you can strip those threads pretty easily if you get too uh, too heavy on tightening things down. And now you got a mess on your hands with drilling and time certain and everything else. So just be very cautious of that when you're when you're tightening anything into aluminum. I can't stress that enough. So we're going to go ahead and set our torque wrench. Now the manual says 35 to 40. 35 to 40, 45 uh, foot pounds, no way. Um, we've seen these nuts come off. The minute the nut comes off, the, the pinion, uh, the uh, keyway on the pinion shaft shears off the end of that, throws your timing out of whack, valve smack pistons, they break off, they destroy the heads, the pistons, the cylinders. Basically, your whole top end's destroyed and you gotta replace it. So very, very important. We wanna torque this nut down to 75 to 80 foot pounds, okay? Super, super important with a lot of red Loctite. So we're going to go ahead and torque that down to 80. There you have it. Okay, that simple. Okay, then we're going to take our specialty awesome grind lock tool off of here. Oh, hey, gravity. Damn gravity.
suppose we could fast forward the video through all this, but I'm going to painstakingly let you watch. Okay, so we got that. Now, we're good to go. Next thing we want to do here is we want to go ahead and put in our oil pump. Very simple to do. So we got our gasket. Gasket's only going to go on one way. As you can see, the hole pattern is different there. So we're going to line it up. Nope, not that way. Line it up. There we go. That's our lineup, just like that. We got our two Allens. Okay, long ones go in the bottom here. One and one. Just like that. Okay, so when we put this in, set those there. So when we put this oil pump in, we're going to come through the hole and it'll mesh with that bronze oil pump gear. And you're going to have to work it to fit in there. It'll finally just kind of pop up in there in that and sit flat. So we'll go ahead and put one up in there. Now, the other thing, you can throw a little dab of red on there. Red or blue, just a little. We don't want that coming out. Slide this up in there. We'll get a little dab here. Whoa. Okay, I'll try and get this one up in there. Okay. So, learning lesson with the Buells. Gotta stick them up in there first because the stupid shock is in the way. We love Buells. That one up in there. That. Now we can get it up over there. Get it up in there. Okay, because we have this big shock in the way while we're doing this, we're going to have to just tighten with an Allen wrench. Normally the specs say 20, 125 inch pounds to 150 inch pounds. Man, I just preached about tightening too tight into uh, aluminum. I personally think that is way, way too tight, okay, for these bolts into aluminum. The cam cover that goes on, it calls for torque specs of 80 to 110 inch pounds. I'm going to tighten those to 100. Okay, I'm just cautious about stripping threads in aluminum like that. So on these, you know, I'm, I'm calling for good and tight, but don't get crazy. Like I say, if you really want it, you, you pop the whole shock off and move the motor. On the Sportsters, you may be able to get in there with... Uh, with uh, a long Allen. They say you can get that thing in and out of there without taking the cam cover off and the Sportsters. Okay, so me, I'm just snugging. And keep in mind, we have a pretty thick gasket in between there. So I'm snugging it down. We got Loctite on there. We should be good. Okay, and again, we can go ahead and rotate the crank. Things are spinning good. We're okay there. Okay, everything looks good. So at this point, since we know the cams are ready to go in, we can go ahead and start lubing things up. If you, if you ordered the full kit from us, you're going to get some red line assembly lube. This is where we want to really, really take and, and lube things up. So before I lube this up, I'm going to show you a few marks here, that one of the marks in particular that we have to pay attention to. On this pinion shaft here, there's going to be a mark on one of the teeth. If you can see that mark right there on that tooth. See that mark? 
that mark is our lineup mark right there. Okay, it's going to be on one of the teeth there, and it's going to line up with the keyway in the back and the mark in the back of that uh, pinion gear there. So keep that in mind. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to lube our oil pump drive gear. I'm going to lube our pinion gear here just a little bit all the way around. Okay, and then we're going to take pinky and we're going to go into our bushings here, inside each one. There, drive around the races. Same with that one and that one. Okay, we can lube our shaft there. Okay. So, we internally we're good and lubed. Next, we're going to go ahead and put our number one cam in. Okay, that's dash three. That's our dash four and our number one. So our number one is going to be dash one there on the back. We're going to go ahead and do the the shaft, the lobe, the front lobe. And we're going to do the teeth. Don't be afraid here to, you don't have to get super, super crazy, but we want to lube it there. Okay, and if we look at this number one and we wipe the lube off here, we're going to have a dot on our shoulder there. See that dot? Okay, so we're going to put this cam lobe in, the number one spot. Now, on all of the XL motors in the earlier model Buells, which is basically an XL motor, up through the X1s, our cams are going to go in one, two, three, four from left to right or rear of the bike to the front of the bike. Okay. On the Buell XBs and the XRs, the cams go in one, two, three, four from front to back. Okay. And uh, I just learned a little new information on that, I guess. Apparently, Buell developed that or did the process of one, two, three, four from front to back because when they first came out with the Buells, uh, or the XBs anyways, the Buell Blast came out first. It was a single cylinder um, motor. And so they had to devise the cam box and everything. And so they moved everything to the front for the single cylinder on the Buell Blast. And from there they said, ah, okay, we'll take that. And then we'll move into the Buell XB platform. And of course, Harley took the XR platform off of that. And, and uh, they left it one, two, three, four from front to back. So information I didn't know, but I learned recently from Alex. We learned it from Aaron. <laughs> okay, so we're going to put in our number three. And it doesn't matter whether it's three or four, but we want to put our number one in, we want to put our number three and four in, and then we'll work with our number two last. Okay, and our goal here is to get things lined up accordingly to make this easy. So on our number three, you can see we have two dots. We have the one I just covered up, or that one there, and the other one there, okay? And one on the gear itself, okay? So we're gonna put in our number three, and we're gonna put the gear, the dot that's on the gear, and point it over towards our number four there, okay? Number three and four are pretty easy to put in. Lube up our gears here. that and then we'll get our lobe done okay so as we go ahead to put in this number four the number four has a dot on the gear there okay right here on the on the gear that needs to line up with the dot on the gear on the number three as we can see right there so as we put this in we're going to go ahead and this is pretty easy to do one of the dots is going to be on a gear and one of the other dots on the number three is going to be between two gears so we're going to work this lobe in, if we can here. Of course, we're hitting the lifter boss there, so we got to kind of go in at an angle here, like that. And get all that out of the middle there. So as we turn this and we look, you can see we're between the two. And as we rotate this here, we want to make sure each one comes together and goes apart. So if we draw a line between the center of this cam journal, if 
we draw a line from the center of the cam journal to the center of this cam journal, we want those two dots to fall right on that center line across there. So as you can see, we're, we're pretty much basically right there in center. Okay, so we're good to go there. Now, the number two cam is where it gets tricky. And what we wanna do here is we wanna take our dot on our number one cam, and we wanna point it right towards the center of our number two bushing there, right towards the center. We wanna take the dot on our number three shoulder there, and we wanna point that right towards the center of the number two bushing. So we're right towards the center there, we're right towards the center there, and then we wanna take our mark on our pinion gear, and we can, I highly recommend putting the cams in on doing a build with us um, before you do the big bore kit on the bike, because then you can grab the connecting rods and rotate the pinion gear to where you want it. And we wanna rotate that, so that points right towards the center of the number two brass bushing there. So now we're pointed everything towards the center of that brass bushing. We're gonna lube up our number two here. All the gears, and you got two gears. You have a smaller one in the back and the bigger one in the front. The bigger gear drives off of the pinion gear. Everything, everything is timed per the dots. Off of the keyway on the pinion shaft, timed into the crank. So we're gonna lube all of our little gears here, like that. Okay, now if we take a look at our number two gear here, we can see we have three dots. We have one over here, one right, in this, right down here, and then one over here. So, common sense, we need to slide this in. We need to line up the far left dot with our number one dot on our shoulder in the number one cam. The middle dot is gonna line up with our pinion gear mark on our pinion gear, and the far right is gonna line up with our number three cam dot on the shoulder. Now, this is kind of tricky because we have to slide this cam in all at once and line up all three marks at one time. So let's see if we can get this started and try this here. Okay, so we want to take a look at our pinion gear mark, which I, if you can see it down in there, it's kind of hard to see. And we want to make sure we're lined up in the middle with that one. Okay, and then we want to take and rotate our cam, and you can actually feel the teeth kind of rotating as you move this, to line up all of our teeth with the dots and try to wiggle and slide this in. I gotta see here. Okay. Just like that, I move this cam and she slides in. Okay. Now we'll mark, we'll go ahead and wipe off our areas here so we can see what we got. So, of course, the pinion gear mark right here, as you see, that's really easy. That's one mark on a tooth and one mark between the teeth. So I would call that, yep, we've got that lined up. Looks very straight. Now, the best way to look at all three to make sure is take your mark on your pinion gear here and your dot and line it up between this journal and this journal, straight across from each other, straight up and down. If it's off like this, you say, yeah, it's lined up. Well, then this doesn't look lined up and neither does that, okay? So to get an eyeball view, we want to put that right towards the center there. You can see right there. And if we do that, when we look at our other pairs, our dot on the shoulder looks straight across to that dot, and the dot on that shoulder there looks straight across the da that lot, uh, dot. Now, a double check or a big way to check this, one of the best ways is, let's, uh, let me hold this. Alex, will you run and grab yeah. the uh, machinist measure? We're going to grab a machinist ruler here. And what we want to do, as we look at this here, what we want to do is hold the machinist ruler from the center of this journal to the center of that journal. We want to run a line there. 
Okay, so we will go ahead and run that line from the center of this to the center of that. And we want to take a look at our dots and make sure our dots fall on that line. Okay, like that, which they look pretty close. If I can get perfect center on it, right? There's our dots, there's our line. Okay, and we can do the same over here from the center here to the center on that one and make sure our dots are falling. Let's see here, center of that one, center of that one, like that roughly, and we can make sure that those dots are on that line, okay? So, just for reference, I say this looks good, okay? And again, if we're pointed between the center here, then we should be able to tell on the other two lines there. But just for reference, I'm gonna slide this cam lobe out in case you're off, and I'm gonna set this number one cam lobe one tooth off. If I can. Nope. Like that. Okay. So I have purposely now set the number one off. If we grab the connecting rods here and we rotate this thing forward and backwards, that does not come together. You want it to come together. It's supposed to come together drawing our line between the two journals here. Okay, it's supposed to come together. Well, we're off. We can tell if it lines up. So be way up there is where it kind of lines up, not down here. And if we go too far, that's surely not lined up. So you can tell whether or not you're off or on one tooth. We're still lined up down here. Okay, we're still lined up here. And we're still lined up over here. Okay, but that is not right on the number one and you can tell being off one tooth. Okay, I'm looking at it. Sometimes it can be deceiving on some cams, so you really gotta make sure and double or triple check. You really gotta make sure that you draw a line with the ruler there and, and really take a hard look. So I'll slide this out nice and easy. So I can spin it one tooth and slide it back in, okay, just like that. Now, if you ever make a correction like this where you have to slide out and move it one tooth, you need to double check all three pairs. So again, if we line up here in the center straight and make sure that we're lined up pointing right at each other, we can look at our other lines. Now we come back and look at the number one and we're lined up right across from each other. So if we rotate this, it goes away, it comes together, and when it comes together, it should be right on this line, right on that parallel line there. They should be lined up. And the same over here with this one. It should be lined up from center to center right on that line there on the bottom of the ruler, okay? If we're off, they're not gonna come together. And you can see, bam, it comes together right on that center line, okay? Same over here. And then you, this is pretty straightforward down here as well on the tooth into the middle dot there. That's very straightforward. Number one to number two, number two to number three, those are your really difficult ones that you gotta work with, okay? But as you work this back and forth, you just double and triple check, making sure you draw that imaginary line between the two centers of the journals and making sure those dots come together right on that line. Other than that, I call that pretty good. Looks really good to me, okay? So then at this point, I'm gonna wipe up any assembly lube that I got on my gasket space there. Okay, and we're good to go there. I'm gonna take the cam cover and we're gonna go ahead and lube up our journals in here, or our bushings in here. I know that was kind of tedious and beating a dead horse, but man, it's important. We really want to make sure we get that right or we can bend valves and hurt the, the heads before even getting the thing on the road. Always, whatever you do, turn your motor over by hand first before you start it. That way you're double checking and making sure. Like that. Okay. So now at this point, we're gonna grab our gasket. And on this cam cover, we had it cut down. 
gives it that really cool industrial look. So we'll set our gasket on there. I'm going to slide this over. Like that. Hold up the gasket. Okay, so there we are. Should be on it there. Push it down just a little. Okay, we got it on. Gasket's on. I think we're good. So I'm going to come over here and grab all my cam cover bolts. So if we separate these, we have one really small. We have So we have one really small, three semi-small, two that are a little longer than those, and then four real long ones. I can tell you three of the four real long ones go right here. The real, real short one, obvious, goes here. Another real long one goes here and here. Our two semi-longs are going to go up here in the corner. And then we have the three shorter one, medium shorts right there. Okay. Okay. So we're go ahead and put these in. Actually, we go grab me the blue Loctite. We're gonna put some blue Loctite on all these. Now, like I said before, torque spec in the manual calls for 80 to 110 inch pounds. I suggest the lower area there of uh, roughly about, I'm going to go to 100. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and blue Loctite. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and screw all these in. While I'm doing this, Alex would come over to this side and take a look at this cam cover. So we cut down this cam cover. Some, it's a service we offer. I think it looks pretty trick. Um, kind of gives it a little more industrial look. It lets us open up the access to the oil pump underneath. As you can see that, you can see it on my Buell there. Um, I think it looks kind of cool. Some people don't like it. They don't want the look. That's I understand. Um, but. If you're interested, we do offer that service. I think it's $95 to cut that down. We do it in the CNC machine. Okay, 
all those snug. Okay. Now, follow the torque sequence in the manual. Um, it's going to be number one here, um, number two here, number three, number four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay. So, and again, I'm torquing them to a hundred inch pounds. You can see all of this, you can see and read all about this torque specs, location, and everything on our website under our tech tip section, the article called Installing XL Cams. We cover all this very in very detail from all the different torque specs to tolerances and everything else. Okay, so there we have it. We'll go ahead and rotate the crank. We spin good, everything is good. Now, one other thing that you want to check, and I just spot check this, it's really hard to do, is our end play on our cams, the back and forth play in there. Now, um, it's very hard to get feeler gauges down in there if you're trying to get super, super accurate. You're trying to do it dry without any lubrication on them and anything, so you get a very accurate reading, but it becomes very, very difficult to get down in the lifter boss hole there. So what we like to do is go with the long screwdriver and pry back and forth just a little bit on the cam lobe there to make sure we have side to side play in there and have enough side to side play. I can tell you this from the factory that they come with a paper gasket on the cam cover there and that paper gasket's pretty thin um, and that's how it comes from the factory. And so when you put an aftermarket gasket on from us or some or even Harley now I think has it, um, they come as a Fomet steel cam cover gasket, Fomet on either side with a steel middle section. When you torque down the cam cover in that to this, that whole gasket's thicker than the normal stock one off the bike, so it automatically moves the cam cover out and gives you that extra play there on, uh, on end play for the cam lobes there. So, um, like I say, you can check with a long screwdriver, prying back and forth, just to make sure that you have some end play there. Again, all the, pr all the exact specs are on our website under installing XL cams. On the tech tip section, you can go there to find it as well. Um, a lot of good information there. Uh, everything that I've done so far is all on our website there, all the different checks to look for and things like that, so it's something to reference as well. This just gives you that visual effect. Um, but other than that, that's how we install XL cams early model Buell cams in the bike. Pretty straightforward. The key here is to lining up our dots and double and triple checking that our dots are lined up and also checking the, you know, the three main checks, the, the um, lifter and the bushing to make sure we're not being held up with smaller base circle cams. Um, making sure on the 91 to 03s that you're checking and clearancing your lifter bosses under there for the lobe swing of the cams. Um, and then the number two and number three cam lobe, making sure that that clearance is the pinion race in there and that we don't, uh, we're not hitting that race. Those can cause some damage if we don't check those things. Um, three major things to check. Other than that, uh, shoot us some comments down below if you have questions or anything, comments, questions, the whole nine yards. Other than that, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Peace out.